Hello and welcome back to Cinematic Universe, everyone. My name is Ernesto Martinez. Joining me, as always, is no one, because our work schedules could not allow us to team up for the newest episode of Supergirl, so I'll be going solo for this new episode. Episode 3, Welcome to Earth. We already had our pilot and our second episode featuring the team up of Superman and Supergirl. Now that Superman is not in the remaining episodes moving forward until we hear otherwise, we're now going to be focusing, as we always have, on the adventures of Supergirl. And this episode is titled Welcome to Earth, which, although we don't have Superman, we also have the next best thing, Linda Carter as the president. Yep. The President of the United States of America. Supergirl and the D.O. are pretty much tasked to protect the President at a summit. And the summit is for the President to, I believe, introduce her new bill that would allow extraterrestrials, aliens from other worlds that are either already living in the, U in the United States or on the planet, or any alien that wants to... Uh, come from whatever galaxy they hail from, to be able to live amongst humans, walk amongst humans, and not have to hide anymore, etc., etc. And if you've ever read the comics, Supergirl comics, Superman comics, Justice League, stuff like that, you know, it gets to the point where aliens are pretty much a dime a dozen. You have Superman, the alien grandfather of all you have supergirl you have uh the indigo girl at least when she wasn't too much of a villain and on top of that we also have the b stories we have mccod brooks who you know him as james olsen he is getting started and getting comfortable in his new role as i guess president of catco while catco is off doing god knows what and james olsen has to deal with Snapper Carr, who, with his cartoonishly grumpy attitude, is trying to dictate how he should do his job rather than the other way around. So we also get that storyline. And we finally get to see a live-action version of Maggie Sawyer. Maggie Sawyer, who anybody who reads the comic books, at least in the recent Batman comics, Maggie Sawyer starred in Batwoman series back in the New 52, which ran for, uh, at least when we're talking about quality, excellent quality, for 24 issues where she had a relationship with Kate Kane, a.k.a. Batwoman. And in this series, she is pretty much not just a detective, but she is tasked in researching and discovering extraterrestrial uh, cases. And through her, we get to be introduced to, I guess you could say, an extraterrestrial uh, bar or pub, however you want to call it, where pretty much any alien that wishes to not be discriminated or not be judged can just go there, have a drink amongst other aliens, other supernatural beings. One thing that I will point out that I did especially uh, enjoy on this episode... Oh, wait, before I get to that, they also... Uh, follow up on Mon L. He wakes up from the last episode. He was choking uh, Supergirl, and he pretty much escapes the DEO custody because he's a Daxum and he wants to return back to his home world. But he doesn't know that his home world was destroyed along with Krypton when Krypton pretty much went up in flames. So you got all these revolving storylines, and the one thing that connects them together is aliens given the same rights as Americans and humans have. Pretty much the show is tackling uh, segregation, discrimination, uh, racism, different cultures, you know, stuff like that. And I kind of commend the episode for dealing and talking about that. I mean, it's very uh, evident, relevant in today's uh, climate, but... You have Supergirl who doesn't trust Monel because he's a Daxamite, and according to Supergirl and Kryptonian lore, at least in the show, uh, Kryptonians and Daxamites don't get along. They despise each other. One side feels the other one is a villain, and vice versa. Then you have President um, 
what's her last name? Linda Carter, who is President Marston, which they should have called her President Carter, but I'm not going to complain. We still get to see the original Wonder Woman on Supergirl as the President of the United States. She pretty much wants her bill to allow all aliens to, you know, have equal rights. And then you also get the whole terrorism uh, commentary where you want to give them equal rights, but then there are also bad aliens. You also want to give them equal rights. And there's also a conversation about, well, you got to have hope and what's living on this on this world if you can't have hope and stuff like that. So there's also a lot of conversations about... You know, yes, you can't judge a book by its cover, but at the same time, you also have to be vigilant about the people around you. And we also get Lena Luthor, who wants to essentially introduce a device that allows people to uh, detect whether the person they're talking with is human or alien. And that is also a topic on discrimination and pretty much violating people's rights, but it's also, you know, enforcing people's... Uh, First Amendment rights and freedom of speech and stuff like that. So there is a lot going on in this episode that, aside from the negatives, it's mostly just positive. I mean, I still think that, although my friend Damon has an amusing and doesn't have that much of an issue with Snipper Carr's portrayal here, I still have an issue because he's just a cartoon and he's just there to be a loudmouth, grumpy, big baby, pretty much. And there are some twists and turns here. Um, we also get a new villain, villain of the week, uh, a pyrokinetic uh, user alien. She shoots flames from every part of her body, whether it's her eyes, her whole body, her arms, her legs, her head. Be creative. She's always just shooting flames. And when she's introduced, she pretty much incinerates um, the president's uh, Secret Service uh, protection detail. And yet when she fires her fireballs and flamethrowers or what have you at either Maggie Sawyer or Alex Danvers, they're just fine. They just get up like it's nothing. So it's a bit of a negative that, you know, you have to choose who you're going to incinerate and who you're just going to lightly burn, which... You know, I know it's comics. Comics tend to do that so that they don't kill your main characters. But don't put your main characters in peril when really there's not going to be any peril. I mean, if you're going to do it, actually do it. If not, grab some other cannon fodder to pretty much get charred to a crisp. And that's pretty much it. I mean, if I had my reviewing partner with me, we would both be dissecting this episode a little more. But... As it stands, it's still another entertaining Supergirl episode. Ever since she moved to the CW in the past three episodes, there's been a severe improvement in storytelling and quality. It still has its negatives, but then again, what episode doesn't have its negatives? The last thing I will bring up, and because I've already spoiled mostly of what happens in this episode, and I always put a spoiler tag at the beginning because I we do review this episode after it airs, so we expect people who are listening to understand that we are going to spoil. We finally get to be introduced to the live-action version of Megan Mars, who we know her as, a.k.a. Miss Martian. Now, I've read that Miss Martian is probably going to have a romantic element with John Jones, which I find a little weird because my introduction to her and a lot of other people who have read the comics and people who have watched the Young Justice animated series, Megan Mars is pretty much listed as John Jones' younger um, relative. I mean, yes, in those series, she's uh, disguised as a green as a green Martian, and she's also a white Martian. I don't know how they're going to do it in the TV show. But she was always a relative, a distant cousin of John Jones and not a love interest. So it's going to be a little weird. But, you know, there's always a change. There's always a, a change of origins in any adaptation. Adaptations come with change. And if they do it right... I won't complain as long as it's, you know, done respectful and tasteful. But, you know, you we know who, who Megan Morse is, so it's going to be a little weird to begin with. So we'll see how they execute it in the coming weeks. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thank you all for listening. You can 
Follow me on Twitter at MartinezXYZ. Um, if you want to find my past reviews on Season 1, you can go to creatorscode.com or moviepilot.com, Cinematic Universe. I'm not posting there anymore because I've been having issues posting there. So I created my Facebook page for Cinematic Universe. You can go to Facebook and write Cinematic Universe Ultimate. Click a like, become a fan, share it, do whatever you want. If you're already listening to me on YouTube, click that subscribe button. Leave a comment, like, share, tell your friends. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.